Before I could revel any further in disgust, the object violently swung downwards into my sternum. A giant mantis-like being had its claws in my chest. It proceeded to tear open my chest and stomach. I could hear and feel my ribs cracking one by one. My ribcage was opened at the sternum, and each half of my ribcage was being torn outwards to each side. The giant mantis-like being then proceeded to remove all my organs and insides with its horrible serrated claws, flinging my organs, guts and entrails into space with enormous speed. The first time I consumed DMT, I vaporized 200 milligrams of translucent yellow crystals on top of a small amount of high-grade cannabis. I consumed the entire contents of the smoking utensil in a single inhalation. I held the inhalation of DMT free base and cannabis in my lungs for less than five seconds when an intense rush began. I don't believe it, I kept repeating in my head. This is impossible. My surroundings began to quiver and slither apart, faster than anything I had ever seen. Everything began moving away from everything else in a mash of speed, brilliant colour and fractal geometric form, before fully shattering the reality in my visual and mental field. It came on like a freight train, I remember thinking. Oh fuck, get this stuff out of me. And frantically trying to exhale. It was pure terror, I thought. Now you have done it. You have killed yourself. You fool, how could you have done this? After a brief mourning at the life I had just departed from, I began to pay attention to my present situation. I remember feeling like I was at the bottom of a foggy mountain with dirt roads. The clouds felt like a domed ceiling. Everything was wet, misty and damp, and the air was heavy and filled with moisture. It was still fairly rainy, and I could smell the wet soil. I could smell the distinct smell of rain radiating through the atmosphere. The air was heavy and cool, and I could see my breath when I exhaled into the cold fog. I was overcome with an intense feeling of panic and deja vu. I felt like a lost child. Everything I knew about who I was, or my life or earth, seemed like a distant dream, like I had fully dissolved out of existence. I was dead, I knew that I was dead, and I was emotionally overwhelmed. Just like sand slipping through finger cracks, I tried to hold on to these aspects of what I knew as my entire identity as a human, all of which quickly slipped from my grasp. I remembered my name, the earth, my family, who I was, being a human and existence on a planet orbiting a star in the universe in three-dimensional space. I could remember time, physics, and things of this nature, but such things were merely faded concepts at this point, and like grabbing at smoke, the effort was futile. All of this slipped away and nearly faded entirely out of my memory. Impossible to cling to all this, I had to let it go. I kept thinking, what the fuck was life? I was unable to tell if I was breathing. I would take air in, but could not feel it entering my lungs and body. I began taking in panicked, deep breaths, nearly hyperventilating in terror, all the while thinking that none of the oxygen was entering my system. Then, before I could panic any further, I noticed a large claw-like object swing into view from my peripheral vision. It was disgusting. It was covered in textured indentations and bumps and fine insectoid hairs. Before I could revel any further in disgust, the object violently swung downwards into my sternum. A giant mantis-like being had its claws in my chest. It proceeded to tear open my chest and stomach. I could hear and feel my ribs cracking one by one. My ribcage was opened at the sternum, and each half of my ribcage was being torn outwards to each side. The giant mantis-like being then proceeded to remove all my organs and insides with its horrible serrated claws, flinging my organs, guts and entrails into space with enormous speed. I was about to go into shock, when I saw a bright green light flash over my shoulder. I thought that it had nearly hit me, almost clipping the side of my neck, when it then stopped in front of my torn open, hollowed corpse. It then became a beautiful, fractal geometric object, morphing and colour changing. At times it was metallic, at other times it was a beautiful jewel, and all the while to look into it was to view endless geometric fractal patterns, moving, morphing and changing colour. This object then began to shrink until it was a mere pinprick of light. As I focused intensely on the disappearing light, another one of these objects flew from behind me, then another, and another. There was a swarm of these objects, all appearing then shrinking down to pins of light, shrinking down to little beautiful green glowing atoms. 
I was surrounded by a swimming flurry of these tenuous phosphorescent flicks of scintillation. The mantis-like creature then began to direct the swarm of these atom-sized objects into my dismembered corpse's open and hollow chest cavity and stomach. I could still see billions of these objects, each one unique and radiating beautiful green-coloured light, and the mantis-like being continued to fill my body with them, billions of them, all beginning to construct new organs and insides of my mangled corpse. The green lights had become like atoms reconstructing my heart, lungs, ribcage and stomach. Then, in a beautiful orange light, I watched my open ribcage melt back into perfect form. It felt indescribable. I could feel the love and light of the Divine Mother radiating through my being. Just as I was slipping into what seemed like an endless ecstasy, everything was violently disrupted. The warm orange lighting and glow and the feeling of divine warmth and comfort which had been engulfing my being began to drain away. It was a fleeting rush like the warmth was being pulled out of the enclosed space in which I was trapped. The surroundings that composed my environment began to squeeze me, violently gesticulating and pushing me outwards. I felt as if I was being pushed head first through a thick, gelatinous membrane. The aggressive gesticulations of the membrane surrounding me were becoming more intense and were occurring at more rapid intervals. It was as if I could feel my cranium begin to protrude into a new environment. I was being born. It was an incredibly traumatic instance, and while psychologically I was still a blank slate, the seriousness of the crisis was evident. This continued until I thought I was not going to make it. I felt that it was all over, and then, in what seemed like a fraction of a second, I had slipped out of this environment and back into the earth. Slowly I began to recognise my surroundings. My face still covered in tears, I looked up and saw the branches of a tree in the yard all slither in sinister fashion from all directions to take place and solidify as the tree in the distance. The world began to slither back into place. Most things moved in an elegant liquid serpentine slithering motion, or like the dancing movements of a flame. As the world constructed itself back into the familiar, so did my conscious state and memory. I was still disoriented and fairly traumatised. I thought I had been gone for millennia. How long was I gone? I asked. About twenty minutes was the answer. Those who were there said in reality I curled up into a ball and began to cry for twenty minutes. I was wondering why my face was wet, because it felt like I had actually just been through being born. I was still covered in tears. I was fully transformed after this event. I had literally been reborn. I had never had a spiritual experience before, but during this event I experienced death, dismemberment, reassembly with magical objects and rebirth. I have never seen the world in the same way since and feel as if I had been given a deep insight into the nature of death and birth. I had been given a deep insight into non-physical conscious states and had been given indisputable evidence that consciousness is not a product of the physical body and that after death, one's conscious being leaves the physical body. I had also suffered from mild depression before this event which has still not returned. I came out of this experience with a deep love for life and an understanding of this existence as I had never had before. I had been given enlightenment to a certain degree, though it's obvious that my journey had only begun and that I still have much to learn.